Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Boomi World 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. John, it's great to be back hosting Boomi World with you in DC this year. Last year in Vegas, this year in DC, a lot of government business, a lot of public sector, a lot of tech for good going on in the keynotes. Uh, Boomi continuing to take their culture, expanding this cloud mindset and service model, low code, data integration, unified platforms, Boomi Verts, a new introduction, a lot of great announcements. A great company, I like, I'm like, I like Boomi. I do too, the energy here is great. You know, Boomi World 2018 was only 11 months ago, John, you mentioned we were in Vegas, and they have added another 1,500 plus new customers. Now they're over 9,000 customers in 80 countries, 580 partners, and customers across every industry. I had a great opportunity to speak with about a dozen Boomi customers in the last week, and their Boomi fandom, it sounds kind of silly, but it's really true. What they have enabled their customers to achieve, like this morning we heard from American Cancer Society, for example, Gilead, leading hotels of the world, is really enabling businesses to transform. Yeah, you know, Dave Vellante and I, when we started covering the big data world in 2010, when we first started theCUBE, you know, one of the things that they observed in the research was that the value was going to be created and captured by practitioners, not so much the vendors selling uh, product at that point, but with cloud computing, you know, the theme of Boomi is business outcomes accelerated, and the big trend that's driving it is that practitioners who are launching projects either on, in the cloud or on premise, premises, they're the ones who are getting the value out of it. So what's happening is you're seeing with the ability to, to start projects quickly, small projects, um, the number of projects a company has in their digital transformation is increasing. This is the mega trend. And from those projects, whether it's a mobile app or a SaaS solution or anything, it's throwing off data. So what's happening is you have this trend, uh, trend of more projects, with the need to get them up and running fast, getting to value, and that is where Boomi's kind of hit their sweet spot because they got a platform that allows people to launch projects fast, small, medium, or large projects, and get them done quickly, and that's throwing off value, but from the value, not only is, is the doubling down of those projects, it's the data. So the unification of the data and integrating it in, it really kind of is, is a nirvana for a business owner, a developer, or an application, because the platform allows that to happen. And that's where this new world of cloud 2.0 is kind of hitting its stride right now, and that's why companies are getting the profitability and the old model of you know, get growth at all costs and losses, like we see on the public markets, we work in other unicorns. They're just investing to take territory and the profits aren't there because the, they're not enabling those kinds of, uh, of outcomes. So I think Boomi's in a nice spot. I think it's a nice portfolio for Dell uh, to have this company. I think this is going to be the next Pivotal. I think what, what Pivotal did with Dell Technologies was a big part of their growth. I think, that, and they were very successful in public, then they ended up getting bought back by uh, VMware and Dell Technologies. I think Boomi's the next rising star in the Dell Technologies portfolio. They won't say that, publicly, they won't say it on the record, they won't even admit it privately, but that's kind of what's going on. Well, when we were at Dell Technologies World, John, covering the Cube with two sets for three days, Michael talked about, Michael Dell, talked about Boomi as the number one cloud integration platform. And as the iPaaS market has evolved in the last 10 years, you know, it's gone from needing to connect cloud to on-prem, but now it's cloud, on-prem, it's edge. And Boomi's uniquely positioned as this single instance, multi-tenant cloud application delivered as a service. And as Chris McNabb, CEO of Boomi says, who will be on momentarily with us, our unfair advantage is our customers. Yeah, and the customers are all leveraging the platforms we just talked about, the outcomes uh, with the projects. But here's the other advantage that Boomi has. They have a anonymized data model where they get the benefit of the collective uh, customer base. So the, the, the collective data can give them better insights. And companies that are successful, that have gone public recently, Copa Software and others, these guys are using the data to create more advantage for their customers. Again, this is one of those, again, nuanced points, but that's where the value is. The value is in the data, data is the new software, and this is where the, the advantage is. And it's interesting, Michael Dell um, is interested in Boomi. I asked him around 2014, you know, outside of VMware, the crown jewel of, of Dell, 
Uh, I said, what are you interested in? And he said, Pivotal. And he was geeking out on Pivotal because he saw the value of Pivotal. Uh, last year I asked Michael Dell, what are you interested in now? And he said, Boomi. And I think he sees Boomi as a key element in that bringing the glue together for the overall Dell technology platform. Well, there's a great story how when Dell was acquiring many companies not too long ago, Boomi was really the center of that universe for facilitating these integrations. You talk about data, we talk about it, John, at every show, customers do as well. Whether you're calling it the new oil, gold, the lifeblood currency of an organization, if it is siloed in hundreds of applications, and a business cannot trust, where's my single source of truth? Its value cannot be harnessed. And one of the things Boomi does really well with Master Data Hub is to allow, I think they said they're, they can connect now with over 1,500 endpoints like Salesforce, NetSuite for example, allowing customers to synchronize data between applications, dramatically transforming everything from customer or employee onboarding to a call center experience. Yeah, I mean, I think the digital transformation is a topic that's been talked about ad nauseum. It's been, been kicked around, it's become a cliche, but when you look at digital transformation, it's people, process, and technologies. And the process and technology side, people have good visibility on what the options are out there. You got cloud, you got on-premise, got a lot of software, software-defined stuff. But the people equation is interesting. We were just at Red Hat's Ansible's Fest last week, and in the automation space on the DevOps side, the people are actually getting the outcomes that they need. And that value piece we were talking about, that's the third leg of the stool of digital transformation. So Dell Technologies has Boomi, which hits that spot directly. The people here are achieving their outcomes that they want in their projects. They're getting that value. That energizes the people component and helps the cultural shift on digital transformation. So I think the people aspect of what Boomi's doing is super critical. That is the, the final chapter of digital transformation. People, process technology, processes are being automated, the technology's there, it's the people equation and, and they're doing it. You're right, they are doing it and that's hard. A number of customers of Boomi's that I spoke with yesterday talked about one of the main, I always say to customers, what were the business differentiators? What were the technical differentiators? And a lot of them will talk about Boomi's cultural alignment with their own culture as really standing out considerably against their peers. You and I were talking before we went live about just the atmosphere in the keynote, um, sort of some of the, the tongue in cheek, they, are really people helping other people and you get that feeling, but customers are talking as well about dramatic transformations to their productivity that they actually didn't yep. even expect to get when they said we need to integrate Salesforce with a transport management system, for example, and whoa, suddenly we are saving whatever it's X number of clicks that really starts to snowball in terms of hours saved per person per month per year. Yeah, and I think what's interesting from the keynote today is it builds on last year's uh, Boomi where we asked Chris Port, the CEO of Variety, and the CEO as well, uh, what, their, what their strategy was, what they're investing in. They said, we're investing in the product. Uh, and they continue to invest in the product, and now with AI and the voice integration, voice enabled or voice accessible data sets, you're starting to see that integration piece go to another level. So I think that's interesting. That sets the table for the AI stuff that they're doing, and I think that's going to be, uh, again, leveraging that unified data set. That to me is a big deal. I think that's the top story here, is that you're starting to see a product focus, using the data, having those data integration points with voice and other mediums, and if they can get that right, then that's a nice automation layer that's going to be where the next level of value for Boomi is going to be created. You know, and their challenge is, they're a small team. They hired 750 people in Q2 of this year, they're hiring more people. So can they kind of keep the rocket ship going uh, on the customer growth? And again, it's a SaaS business model, um, it's a unified data set, so I like this, I like their, their fundamentals. So you talk about AI, and one of the big announcements came out this morning that Chris McNabb, CEO, talked about with Accenture is what they're doing to partner together to enable conversational AI. And one of the women from Accenture who was on stage will be joining us later today. And I loved how she and Chris were talking about, you know, we all interact with AI, whether we're calling an ISP or some sort of call center and you're screaming agent into the phone because it's really starting to frustrate you. One of the things that I had a mind shift on earlier this year while covering a show for theCUBE was, hey, that's actually our opportunity as regular folks on the street to help the models learn and train. And what they showed today on that, that fun demo was how they're actually talking to be the Boomi bot, 
about looking at, you know, for example, employee onboarding, what percent complete is it, what needs to be done, and how can I actually use voice recognition mm -hmm. to get other processes within the organization across business units done. I do though think, what about somebody like Meryl Streep who can do all these different accents when conversational AI comes up and it's going to recognize your voice as a footprint? That was one thing I thought of. How are these people that, you know, that have great ability to mimic accents going to do? Well, and they're as big as Amazon, they can get the celebrities because Amazon just have Alexa has now uh, the voices from celebrities. Samuel L. So I Jackson. Think, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I think one of the things that I think is important to, to talk about is in, the, in this keynote was the key, my key takeaway was they hit the core themes. Uh, unified data set, which is their value, multi-cloud, global customers, ecosystem partners, low code, developer environments are changing and developing fast, and data integration. This is the key areas of topics, and what they announced uh, here on stage was the voice accessible data services that's secure and scalable, lo more low code conversations, projects are being deployed faster, and this transformation journey, and I think, if I look at Boomi outside of those strengths I just mentioned, I think their challenge, Lisa, is going to be, can they foster the ecosystem? Can they build those uh, blocking and tackling things that they need to get done in the marketplace on the go-to-market? Obviously the customer growth is there. Can they develop that ecosystem? Once that ecosystem is developed, then you're going to start, I think start, to start to see more, more action there, but it's still small and they got to do some more work. But I think the momentum is there and we should definitely point out that we are in DC, which is symbolic for Boomi. Just a few weeks ago in August, they announced FedRAMP authorization. Uh, they are one of, not the first, but one of the first iPaaS vendors in the uh, in the FedRAMP marketplace. But something that, that Chris McNabb, and look at my notes here, said this morning was they were the first iPaaS vendor to get certified in five months and their competitor, I have a feeling I know who it is, took 18 months. So they're proud of that, that really, but he also said in something that we can unpack with Chris McNabb a little bit later today is that the FedRAMP certification, the availability in the marketplace opens up even more opportunities, yeah. not just for federal, from a security, from a privacy perspective. Yeah, this is a big, this is a big story. I think this is going to be a, a subtext because they have other and other announcements, but that FedRAMP certification in record time, as you pointed out, is significant for a couple of reasons. We've been following um, the government transformation since the CIA deal with AWS and the recent JEDI contract, which we've been talking a lot about, um, really points to the modernization of the government and the procurement. And the government is going through its own transformation. And the ones that are being successful, the ones that have all the attributes that Boomi has, cloud-based, unified data sets, security built in. These are the fast track to the modern infrastructure. That's what the government's doing. So I'm expecting uh, a lot of DC business. I think it's kind of not a fluke that they're in DC here for a reason. They're here to do some business. They're doing work with um, the veterans. They're doing work with American Cancer Society, a variety of other things. But the government, I think they're going to do a lot of government business because once they get that certification, that's going to open up a ton of business, and we've seen the government is leaning towards modern architectures, not the old school oracles of the world. So, you know, that is definitely changing, and I think they're in a good position. You brought up American Cancer Society and veterans, two things that were near and dear to my heart, and it was great to see, one, how Boomi is working with American Cancer Society. Their CIO was on stage. He will be joining you and I this afternoon about how they are leveraging Boomi for, I think they call it service match, to match cancer patients with Uber and Lyft drivers to get people to their treatment and back. And how that was enabled by Boomi, I just thought was, was the story that will resonate with every single person regardless of where you live, what industry that you're in. That's transformative and that's such a service that is so critical. Well, that's a th that points to the validation of the trend we were just talking about at the, at the beginning was the trend about getting projects off the ground isn't about some IT department. It could come from someone who sees an opportunity to solve a problem in the business or their mission, in this case, your example. This is huge because the time to value is faster. So it's not an IT-led thing, it's a business or mission-driven outcome. So throwing an app together and, and mashing up you know, GPS and other things to provide value, that's where the action is. That's why there's so much action in the cloud. That's why Boomi's doing so well, because they're hitting that mark right there. It's not hard to do. You know, time to value can be one of those, as a marketer, well, how do you actually measure that? 
But we were, we're seeing results. it. Results. Exactly. <laughs> it works. We're seeing that in, in, in so many different use cases of Boomi in so many different industries, whether it's American Cancer Society or sky powering uh, internet and uh, services for customers. Well, Lisa, the listen, this is, this is a big thing that people always whitewash and they try to hide the ball on. And we're now living in a transparent era of a modern infrastructure and these applications. You cannot hide the ball on success. It either has value or it doesn't. It has value in throwing off revenue, because people pay for value, and if it's being used from a mission standpoint, that's undeniable. So what's happening now is that the new KPIs are, success can be defined. And you, you count out KPIs and dashboards to say, hey, are people paying for it? Boom, top line revenue, bottom line profit, usage, on apps, so there's no more you know, people fudging the numbers or trying to hide the ball on whether a project was successful. I think this is going to change the landscape significantly. It is, and we're going to unpack all of that today, John. We've got a whole bunch of the Boomi execs on today, some partners and some customers as well. So guys, stick with us. John and I have a great full day packed. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 19.